Seb's going to be presenting the Bitcoin miracle in Virunga, and he's going to be talking about hydroelectric Bitcoin mining. He is uh, a Bitcoin miner in France focused on sustainable energy production. And so I'm super excited to see what you've got going on because we need you and we need the world to have okay. clean energy and lots of Bitcoin. Thank you. All right. Aloha. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, we, we are a little uh, bit late. It's better for me because I, I am exhausted. A very uh, long trip to come here. Uh, it will be very uh, um, dynamic. We, we, I want to show you a, a short movie about the mining in the Virunga Park. Uh, this movie will explain uh, how the, um, the development of electricity is important in this region and, and how the Bitcoin mining can help this development. So it's very short, it's five minutes. Stay focused because uh, it's very, uh, there, there are many information in uh, lots of information in, in, in this movie. So let's go and uh, I come back in five minutes. Thank you. They've created a $40 million a year black market that preys upon basic human needs like boiling water and cooking food. What we desperately need is clean energy, renewable energy, not oil and not charcoal. And where is this renewable energy solution taking place? Well, let me show you. Emmanuel brings me to Metebe, home to a run of river hydroelectric plant in the heart of Virunga. It's powered by the Rachuru River, which flows from Lake Edward and generates 14 megawatts of electricity, enough energy for over a million and a half residents in nearby Goma. Since there's no dam, there's minimal disruption to the natural ecosystem. We're hoping in the next eight years to create eight power plants like this to generate 105 megawatts. That is enough power to create between 80 and 100,000 jobs enough to draw out all the young men and women from the militias and work on a whole new instrument for bringing stability to the region. We met Emmanuel de Merode at the beginning of 2020. Two hydroelectric plants were already in operation and a third one on the Louviero River was due for completion six months later. But it was clear to him that the grid in this extremely isolated area would not be ready and it would be a long time before the plant would have sustained demand. The ideal would be an electro-intensive customer who would set up on the production site. But who would want to set up a factory in Congo? In the country's most dangerous zone? In the middle of the jungle? In a mountainous area? With no real roads? No internet? And the closest village more than four hours away? Could Bitcoin mining cope with these conditions? We thought so. Would any professional miners risk their lives and their production tools in this environment? Well, before saying yes, we studied the situation. Emmanuel de Merode and his team's commitment to the preservation of the park is a fight to the death. Over 200 ranchers have been killed in the last 20 years. 
and he himself was ambushed and shot several times with an AK-47. We were in the presence of true ecological fighters, heroes, and they were asking for our support. So, we started as soon as the plant opened in September, with two containers. The Virunga farm was born. Nothing has been easy, as the violence has only intensified over the last three years. In addition to chronic insecurity, we've had numerous storms cutting off power to the farm, and recently, floods on a scale never seen before in the region. But it is a resounding success. For the Virungas, the revenue coming from this farm is about $100,000 per month, and that's enormous. We've shown the park management that we can absorb the excess power with extreme conditions and constraints where no electro-intensive industry would set foot. Only mining can do this. Without mining, the Louvero plant would be working at 20% capacity. Without mining, the park would be at risk of bankruptcy. This is what Emmanuel de Merod has just revealed to the American press. Today, the fourth Virunga hydroelectric power station is under construction in the northeast near Ronguba. And already the park authorities know that mining will be essential for this 30 megawatt unit. So when someone tells you that the electricity used for Bitcoin could be used for something else, for a more dignified purpose, remember the Virunga farm. Thank you. Uh, on the on the movie, you saw GF, my uh, my uh, associate and, and friend. So GF, come on the stage, please. And <laughs> come, 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 come. It's very rare. He uh, doesn't like to be on stage, so I insist. Uh, and we have a few minutes, so it's up to you. Uh, you you have to to ask me anything, what you want about uh, this project and about mining in general, if you want. So I wait for your questions. Thank you. Just generally speaking, given that no one wanted to go to these locations, you went. What is it like? day in, day out in, these, in this location, living there, working on this facility. I apologize, let me speak a little more slowly. Being there, what is it like day in, day out? What is it like running the facility? What is, is, is there any threat of violence with the militia groups? Um, just on, from a very human perspective, being the person on the ground, being someone on the ground, what is it like day to day? Is that? <laughs> Does anyone speak French? Can someone help me out? <laughs> Yeah, I, I yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, it, it's dangerous. It's, yeah, it's really dangerous for all people living in this uh, region, not only for the miners, but. Uh, merci beaucoup. Uh, so yes, it's dangerous. We we take care, but uh, you know the. We can't know when the danger is coming. We we can't know before. So. Um, we, we lost uh, the, the, the team uh, manager uh, six months ago in uh, Nambush. So, um, yes, it's dangerous, yes. Yes. And for, for the team. Have you identified other sites that... Um, I mean, I, I would like to know how many other sites in Africa or around the world that you see this type of application working well? Yes, absolutely. We have many, uh, many projects in Africa. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not the same kind of uh, project. It's not uh, so dangerous. This region is particular, particularly uh, uh, special. You know, it's war. It's a civil war for a long time. And uh, we, we have another project beginning now. 
in uh, the other Congo, Congo Brazzaville, uh, which is a peaceful uh, country. So uh, we, we have different projects in Kenya, in um, um, Cameroon, uh, and um, ah, in Guinea, and other countries. This kind of plants with uh, a lot of um, surplus of electricity, it's everywhere in this kind of region because um, there's no electricity for people. So they are, they are building the, the plants and wh when you build a, a dam or a, a hydropower plant, at the beginning it's too big, everywhere. Because you have to, to pull the lines uh, to create the, the network and it's long. So you build the, the, the plant, the dam, and after you have to pull the lines. And it can be one year, but it can be 10 years long. So the mining is very uh, important, and people in Africa, uh, the, the authorities, uh, start to understand it. And I can say something. We, we do mining for uh, eight years, seven years, and I have a certainty now. It's Bitcoin will never be forbidden globally. It's sure, because it's too useful. Mm. Thank you. So, first of all, thank you very much for doing what you're doing. I not only think Bitcoin mining is the most important thing on the planet, but I also think that you're standing here showing this is absolutely important. My question will build up on what you actually almost just answered. I would like to understand what is the specific problem you're solving for these energy dams? Is it net metering or do you actually consume the energy until the lines are bought, uh, built or do you take a certain consumption of the let's say 30 megawatt on a regular basis to finance a project so what is the specific benefit so to say in these cases ah, um, i think it's explained in the in the in the film you know it's very uh, simple to understand we have too much electricity <clears throat> and we are the only one the mining is the only one industry in capacity to come in this kind of uh, um, isolated uh, uh, area. And there's no other industry in capacity to come. You know, there's no road, uh, no airport, uh, nothing. So you, you don't have a shop, you don't have an hotel, you have nothing. So you can install a mining farm, but you can't install a... Um, a factory of uh, steel, for example. So, so it's, a, it's a regular consumption. So you say there's 30 megawatts being produced, 10 you take, and the other 20 are given to the, to the, to the cities, sorry. Um, I was wondering if, so what you're basically confirming it is, it is the regular consumption of energy, which is an additional revenue model to the dam because the dam produces 30 megawatt while the city only uses 20. Understood. Um, how do you manage the repair of the machines if it's so remote? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's special. So uh, we, we, have to, um, uh, we have to manage all the maintenance. We have to repair the machines in the jungle. So uh, Jean-Francois uh, used to come in the, in the farm and explain to the, to the people, to the guys, the, the engineers we have, the local people, uh, how to repair the, the machines. They have training with the chi Chinese people, uh, with internet it's possible, and we have a team now, um, I think they are the best in the world because they are in capacity to repair these kind of very technical machines in the jungle with nothing, you know. Congratulations, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we have an, another question? Yeah, no. you, you have the micro? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> you move. Um, hi. Um, I was just wondering if you are using the heat, like are you doing anything with the byproduct of the mining? It's a very good question. Um, uh, yes, uh, we have a, a very interesting project. We don't need to use the, the heat, but uh, one, uh, Thomas, who is um, one associate, one shareholder of the company, and um, the chief of operations, 
think about uh, one project is to dry the fruits. And uh, is uh, in the Virunga farm at the moment, I think uh, for one month again. And he, he is testing, the, so the, the process is simple. Uh, it exists already. The, the, the name of this um, uh, sweet uh, material is um, uh, fruit laser. And you do it only with uh, hot air. It's the normal process in the industry. And they, they use a, a big volume of air at 60 degrees. So it is exactly what we have uh, at, at the front of the containers. So he's trying, he's mixing the, fruit, the fruits at the moment, and uh, he, he makes many tests. And we think we have uh, 10 megawatts of it. So we can imagine to have a big production. And you know, because when you have 10 megawatts or 12 megawatts, we have 12 people working in the farm. With the fruits, we we can imagine to have 100 or 200 people working. So in terms of uh, jobs, in terms of um, money coming in the, in the country, in this area, it's, it's a very nice project. And we are sure to, to have success with this project because you have fruits and lost fruits everywhere in, in this region of Africa. So yes, we, we think about it and it's the, the most um, important project for us at the moment. Thank you, Charles. It's okay? I think it's time to finish. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.